This video is supported by Brilliant.org. In 1966, the Beach Boys released Good Vibrations, which went on to become one of the most iconic songs of all time. And in 1991, Marky Mark, aka Mark Wahlberg, released his Good Vibrations, which today is mostly forgotten. He was a rapper. He was a rapper. True story, the first concert I ever went to in my entire life was the Beach Boys when I was a little kid, which I used to be really embarrassed about that, but now I think it's kind of cool. Although it's, it was the Kokomo Beach Boys and not the Pet Sounds Beach Boys, but still. I'm ancient. But could they have been onto something? We've known for a long time that the brain produces a variety of brain waves associated with different states of consciousness like alpha, beta, delta, gamma, and theta. And they've been helpful with diagnosing issues and understanding what's going on inside the brain, but they've never really been associated with consciousness itself. But what if that's exactly what consciousness is? Just synchronized vibrations in the brain? A new theory suggests that might be true. I'm about to make a statement that I can't really prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, but we've known each other long enough that maybe you'll, you'll take this on faith, so here it goes. I, Joe Scott, am a conscious being. Yeah, I know, controversial. I'll try not to cut myself with all that edge. But if you can accept that I'm conscious and I can accept that you're conscious, then we have a fundamental basis for which we can begin to understand one of the biggest problems in psychology, neuroscience, and philosophy. It's called the hard problem of consciousness, and it's not something that you can prove with just waves on a brain scan. Consciousness is defined in a lot of ways, but for our purposes today, let's define it like this. An internal subjective experience complete with sensations and emotions. The hard problem in a nutshell is all about connecting the dots between the mushy collection of cells in our head and the subjective conscious experience that we all have. Since the brain is part of the body and the mind is arguably not, it's become known as the mind-body problem. But calling it the hard problem kind of gives us more leeway as we start to look into AI and computer consciousness. But before we go too far down that path, let's, let's talk about how consciousness works in biological organisms like you and me, assuming you're not silica-based. Individual neurons aren't conscious, or at least they don't display consciousness in the way that we understand consciousness, but for some reason you put 86 billion of these things together in a bone case and then voila, you get everything. Is nobody knows why. The specific mechanisms aren't fully understood. Now we know, of course, that neurons communicate with each other through electrochemical signals across synapses, but some experiments have shown that some brain processes actually move faster than that allows. So there have been some theories that there's some kind of spontaneous self-organization going on. Those brain waves I talked about earlier are kind of a symptom of that. But still, what does that have to do with consciousness? How does that create a subjective experience? How does that create the mind? One thing that I talked about previously in a video recently was panpsychism. Panpsychism argues that consciousness isn't an emergent property of matter, that it's actually a fundamental property of matter at the smallest scale. So the spin of a quark isn't random, it's actually kind of a conscious choice. That's right kids, it's time for... Ooh, alarm's busted. The thing is, though, as much as you may want a woo-woo alarm here, the fact of the matter is, if you make mind and matter flip sides of the same coin, some very interesting possibilities spring up. I recently came across an interesting article that offers up some new ideas on this, and it's called The General Resonance Theory of Consciousness. It was written by Tam Hunt, affiliate guest in psychology at UC Santa Barbara, and he spent about 20 years developing this theory with his partner, psychology professor Jonathan Schooler. The resonance in GRT refers to synchronous vibrations and collections of matter that allow them to organize themselves into complex minds. Everybody got that? Lost already? I know. Hang on. It basically says that all matter at the smallest scales vibrates. And we know this is true, actually, due to quantum field theory, which argues that all matter are just vibrations in quantum fields. GRT argues that if matter is arranged properly, it can sync up so that that proto-consciousness can kind of become the subjective consciousness that you and I experience. And without that structure, it can't fall into synchrony, so it never really evolves beyond that proto-consciousness level, which is why if you took a whisk and shoved it up your nose and whipped it all around, you would not still have consciousness. <laughs> Please just trust me on this. So resonance kind of answers the easy part of the mind-body problem, the easy part of the hard problem. 
Synchronized vibrations happen in nature all the time. The pacemaker cells in our heart are a good example of this, and constructive interference in the ocean waves is another. We see synchrony in those brain waves that I mentioned earlier. Gamma waves, for example, are related to focus and concentration and memory storage. And the reason that synchrony can occur in us and not, say, rocks, is because we have biophysical pathways that we've leveraged to make that flow of information easier and more available. Kind of like the way a bunch of random beeps doesn't really convey information, but Morse code does. Or you could say it's like light coming out of a laser as opposed to a light bulb, because that's basically what a laser is. It's photons that have been synchronized together. And this may be why we've only seen complex consciousness in, you know, biological organisms with big, complex brains. Of course, that could change. While we haven't seen anything that resembles consciousness in AI, Tam believes that this is a field that's going to grow exponentially in the near future. Now, it is possible that there are other kinds of consciousnesses that we just aren't aware of, that we can't perceive ourselves, like, uh, like the sun, for example. It actually produces pulses of electromagnetism that can fall into synchrony, at least in models. So, I mean, is the sun conscious? Sort of? Kind of? Little bit? To be clear, general resonance theory does not say that the sun is conscious. It's just sort of a thought experiment to show that there are different levels of consciousness out there. It's sort of like a Russian nesting doll, where inside every synced consciousness there's a, a bit of a proto-consciousness, and below that there might be another rudimentary consciousness, and below that all the way down to, you know, the vibrations in quantum fields. It's turtles all the way down, if turtles were vibrations. To borrow a phrase from mathematician and philosopher Alfred North Whitehead, the reality become one and are increased by one. Another way to put it is that consciousness is greater than the sum of its parts. You put all those nested consciousnesses together and it doesn't, you know, go down, it ticks up. And each level of consciousness continues to exist, both as its own individual level of consciousness and as part of the bigger, grander consciousness. Now, there are other theories that assume that lower level consciousness exists, but they argue that once that dominant consciousness takes hold, the others go extinct. That's not the case in GRT. In GRT, the lower level parts continue to exist inside the synced mind, and once that mind is dissolved, they may continue. In an unpublished paper, the authors write that resonance can be achieved momentarily, resulting in a flicker of shared consciousness, and then disappear the next moment. They go on to describe the ability to create relatively stable structures that allow for a persistent type of consciousness as a defining feature of biological life. We can go from awake to asleep, exchanging gamma rays for delta waves, and still maintain that continuity of consciousness thanks to our memories and whatnot. Nested consciousnesses are not always the same many, and they don't always create the same one. People grow and change, they eat and excrete. It's like the ship of Theseus uh, thought experiment where you have to ask, you know, how much of something can be replaced before it's not itself anymore. It's like one thing that kind of helps me to deal with uh, pain and trauma from my past is the fact that uh, all of our cells or almost all of our cells get replaced every seven to ten years. So if this thing that I'm so hung up on took place further back than that, then I mean, Technically, that happened to somebody else. And feel free to use that if you're hung up on something, although technically, because we do have continuity of consciousness through our memories and whatnot, uh, technically, it is still the same you. And one of the core tenets of GRT is that because information is always flowing through resonance, it can actually flow up and down across all the levels. As Tam said in an interview, consciousness is like weaving fabric with disappearing thread. You weave just one or two or a few threads in your loom and they disappear pretty quickly, but if you actually have a constant process of weaving back and forth, you can maintain a standing wave, a fabric of consciousness. The idea of layered consciousness is kind of hard to wrap your head around, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense. I mean, something that's true of me is that if I'm alone, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> there's just, there's always a debate in my head over every single idea that I have, like shifting around and arguing both sides. And, and if I do have some kind of major epiphany, I'm sure many of you have experienced this, it kind of feels like it just came from somewhere else. That somewhere else might be a deeper level of consciousness. It probably helps to understand this theory if you're already a panpsychist, which I'm not necessarily, neither is Jonathan Schooler, but he still likes this theory enough that he's worked with Tam on this over the years. Now, one of the criticisms of GRT is that some people have said that it's not falsifiable, which means that there's not any experiments that you can run that can prove it wrong, which is kind of necessary for something to be called science and not pseudoscience. But to be fair, this is true of every theory of consciousness, really, because there's no way to directly observe another person's subjective experience, although there might be a loophole for GRT. Tam and Jonathan are working on a couple of new papers, which they were kind enough to share with us, which create a bit of a framework for tests in the near future. 
Because the idea is that it depends on information flow, that dominant level of consciousness can only travel as fast as the flow of information in that medium that it's being held in. In other words, you can't have a dominant consciousness whose nested consciousnesses are traveling at different speeds because then they wouldn't be synced. But if we could create an AI that uses resonance as its organizing principle, then we should be able to test this. And some neural networks that use a type of resonance actually do already exist. I'll put some information about that down in the description. Another option for testing in the not too distant future is Neuralink. We talked about this in a recent episode, but the ability to actually get down there in the brain and read things at a cellular level should open up vast new amounts of information that we can use to test this. The bottom line is this is an idea that's still in its infancy and as technology progresses we're going to find more and more ways to test and develop new ideas around the mind-body problem. Whether it's panpsychism or resonance theory or something way, way more boring, every day we're inching just a little bit closer to discovering ourselves. So does the idea of resonance theory blow your mind or did it just blow your brain? Or do you think it's crazy? Or does this make sense to you? Sync up with everybody else down in the comments below. Speaking of neural networks, if you'd like to understand those a little bit better, so maybe you could test out resonance theory yourself, there is a course on that on brilliant.org. Because of course there is. Brilliant's Artificial Neural Networks course is perfect for anybody who has a basic understanding of computer science and wants to get a head start on the next big leap in computer technology. It'll set you up with a foundation for the core principles of neural networks with a little inspiration from the human brain and linear algebra. And if you don't have a basic understanding of computer science, you can work your way up to neural networks, starting with the Computer Science Fundamentals course. And don't let the word course scare you. These aren't a series of boring lectures that'll put you to sleep. These are taught through interactive puzzles and animations that walk you step by step through the learning process, so you can learn in a way that makes sense to you. There's also a daily challenges feature that gives you a little nugget of brain exercise every day and a variety of random topics. Brilliant's available online on your phone. You can even download courses to go. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe and get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And for those who want to go the premium route that gives you access to all of their uh, courses, the first 200 get 20% off for life. Brilliant's been a great sponsor of this channel. I really do enjoy working with them. And yes, uh, signing up for Brilliant does support me and it supports them. It's a win-win for everybody. So brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down in the description. Big thanks to Brilliant for supporting this video and a huge shout out to my answer files on Patreon that are forming a good community and getting to know each other and doing crazy stuff and making this whole thing possible. I can't thank you enough. Here's some new people that have joined. Let me murder their names real quick. We've got Marlon Shell, Solomon Simon Jacob, Mike Roach, Edsel Malisig, Robert Bergman, Rob Pittman, Sanjaya, uh, Akia Cohn, Adam Frost, The Dean Machine, Graham, Maltovino, Breha, and Professor York, or Prof York. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, get early access to videos, and just join an amazing community, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Before I close this out, I really would like to thank Tam Hunt for taking the time to talk with us and give us some information to kind of help put all this together. I wish him luck with his uh, future research on this, and if you want to find out more, I've got links down in the description. Please do like and share this video if you liked it, and if this is your first time here, Google thinks you'll like this video, so you might want to check that out. Do as Google says, and you might want to check out any of these others. And if you do like them, I invite you to subscribe. I hope you find this channel worth subscribing to. I'll come back with videos every Monday and Thursday. As always, t-shirts are available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Thanks again for watching. You guys go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.